want you to turn with me to Isaiah, the 57th chapter, verses 18 and 19. Isaiah 57, verses 18 and 19. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58, excuse me, 57, verse 18 says, I have seen his ways and I will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comfort unto him and to his mourners. Now this is Jesus speaking here. And in the 19th verse, he says, I create the fruit of the lips, peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Hallelujah. The power of words. This message will help you no matter where you are in life or no matter what you might be going through. So I want you to listen and I want you to take notes and write some things down. If the enemy is destroying you in any area of your life, it's because you don't have enough information in that particular area. Hosea, the fourth chapter, verse six says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now we are created in the image of God and we are God's only creation that he has given the ability to speak. And we looked at the power of words on last week in Genesis, the first chapter, in that third verse where God spoke and he said, let there be light and it was, light appeared. Then in that third verse, he said, the let, let the firmament. And he said, let there be firmament. And it was so. But I made a mistake on last week and I said, let there be infirmament. And that's incorrect. He said, let there be firmament, which simply means that he was separating the heavens from the earth, the waters from the heaven. Amen. We serve a God, a miracle working, in powerful word, powerful God. We serve a miracle working, powerful God. And God tells us that his words is inseparable. You cannot separate God's power from his word. God is a God of words. We serve a word God. God said I fashion, I form, I create. What you continuously release out of your mouth, what you continuously confess, not once, but over and over, you continuously confess. He said, this is what I create. In other words, this is what's going to manifest in your life. So what it is that you want God to do in your life, those things that you confess out of your mouth constantly and believe God for, God said, those are the things that will manifest in your life. If you don't like what you have now, if you don't like where you're at right now in your life, then change your confession. Change the words that you're releasing out of your mouth and start speaking positive words over yourself. So on last Sunday, we had a challenge. Seven day fast, fasting, faithless words, fasting, anything that does not line up with what God says about us in his word. So, it could have been true, or it could be true, but we said, even if it's true, we're gonna zip it up. We're not gonna speak it out of our mouth. We're only going to release faith-filled, good things about ourselves and about others. If it's not positive, don't release it out of your mouth. So that was the challenge for last week. So how did we all do? We did good, didn't we? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And I know you all were so excited so we're going to have to keep that fast going for another seven days. The reason for this is it's bringing more of an awareness of what you're releasing out of your mouth. 
Many times we can say things carelessly and not really paying attention to what we are saying. But words have power and words are creating something. So you want to be careful what you're releasing out of your mouth. Glory be to God. We serve a word, a God of words. What you confess by faith, you'll possess. Your confession will be your possession. So when you're going through problems and struggles in your life, when there seems to be hindrance that's keeping you from what God has in store for you, don't just sit idly by with locked jaw. Open up your mouth and say something. Release something out of your mouth. Jesus told us that in Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 23, he said, you can speak to the mountain. He said, you can do what? Speak to the mountain. That means that you open up your mouth and you are saying something about the situation that you're in. He said, you speak to the mountain and say to the mountain, say to the obstacles, the struggles and the challenges and situation that might be going on in your life. Say something, release faith filled words out of your mouth that line up with what God says about you in his word. He says, speak to the mountain and tell the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He said, and if you believe, if you believe that whatsoever you say, believe it in your heart and you shall have whatsoever you say. Amen. So what are you releasing out of your mouth? What are you saying about your situation? Are you speaking to cancer and demanding that cancer be removed, dry up at the roots? It can't live in my body. Now that, is that what you're saying? Are you saying out of your mouth, I'm Filled with the precious Holy Ghost. And if the enemy attack my body in any area, the Holy Spirit that lives within me will dry it up. Can't live in my body. Speak to that mountain of cancer. Speak to the mountain of COVID. Speak to the mountain of lack. Speak to your children. Speak blessings over them. Mighty men, mighty women of God, serve God and serve God only. Never be a part of the world system. You don't look at what you see in the natural but you're speaking faith filled words out of your mouth. That's what we're talking about. Words are important. Words have power. Words are creating something. The words you release when you come in here on a Sunday afternoon and you're praying and you're praising God and you're lifting up your hands and you're worshiping him, you're changing the atmosphere here in the sanctuary. How are you doing it? By the words that you are releasing out of your mouth. Let me give you an example of what words can do when you, that things that you release out of your mouth. We're going to go to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Some of this I'm going to just read it because you know what? I want you to get a revelation. First Samuel, the 17th chapter. And it'll be up on the screen for you if you don't have your, um, your Bible with you. And I'll be there in a minute myself. Okay. Let me give you a little backdrop here. In first Samuel, the 17th chapter. The children of Israel are at war with the Philistines. The Philistines are here. The army of Israel is here. The Philistine army is here. And the Philistines have a giant called Goliath. And Goliath would come out every day. If you look at... Um, 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, it said, And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and, present, and presented himself 40 days. Here's what Goliath did. 
early in the morning, he would get up and he would come out and he was a trash talker. He was full of himself. He felt like he was the, all of that and some. He felt he couldn't be defeated. He was standing almost 10 feet tall. He was a warrior from his youth up, known to win battles. And he stepped out early in the morning and he would taunt the children of Israel, the army of Israel. And he would say to them, hey, send me out your best man. All of these other people, they don't have to die. I could kill them all. You know, I got the power. I can do it. But I'm going to be generous. Just send me out your best. And if he defeat me, we'll serve you. But if I defeat you, and I will, because you don't have anything over there that compared to what I can do. Oh, he was full of himself. He said, and you all going to serve me. He taunted them. He said, you all are nothing. Y'all can't stand up against me. Send me your best. Come on, what you got? And when he would come out and bristle up and taunt the children of Israel, the army of Israel would pull back in fear. And then at night, he would step out and do the same thing. You guys have had all day to think about what you want to do, who you want to send out. You know, you're not going to win the battle anyway. You just might need to decide what man you want to give up. Because I got this. You don't have anything that match up to me. And he'd go back in. But now here's something I want you to get right here. The enemy want to get in your ear. He want to ruin your day first thing in the morning. So you'll have a bad day all day long. He done got in your ear. He done sent somebody or something to get you upset. So now you go through your day. You're upset. Then he coming back at night because he wants you to be woke all night long. He wants you to be mad and upset. He going to tell you about what you did wrong that day to get you all upset. So you're tossing and turning all night long and you don't get any rest. That's what he'll do. We all have Goliaths in our lives. You have them, I have them, but it's up to us to know the tricks of the Goliath that Satan sends your direction to keep you upset. So this is what Goliath did day after day. 40 days is a long time to put up with that kind of uh, taunting and being in fear. They were in fear. But how many of you know God didn't give us spirit of fear? But they were afraid. Little David, shepherd boy, 16, 17 years old, small, small kid. He heard this giant roaring up and talking big and bad and, you know, disrespectful to the God of Israel. He said, where is your God now? Your God can't save me from save you from me. Oh, he was totally disrespectful, arrogant, full of himself, you know. But I've heard somewhere along the line that the bigger they come, the harder they fall. Amen. David hears about this. He's a shepherd boy tending his dad's sheep. And his father sends him out to the, on the battlefield, excuse me, because his three brothers are in the army. He sends them lunch to see how they're doing. And when David gets there, he hears Goliath roaring and cutting up and cursing and everything he could think he was big enough to say about the children of Israel and their God. And David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's defying the living God? Who is it? So they told David, they said, well, you know, this giant Goliath that they have. And he told David, but you know, it's a reward for anybody that kill him. The king was a coward. Saul was a coward. He didn't want to go against him. So he put out a reward. He said, anybody that defeat Goliath, They'll marry one of my daughters and they will never have to pay taxes. Everybody loved that part, not paying taxes. Just think about it. If you was living tax free, what would that be like? How much more money would we have? So David says, hmm, I'll do it. I'll take him on. 
first of all, the king didn't trust David because David maybe standing five, 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 seven. Goliath, Goliath is almost 10 feet tall. He had a reputation that he was, you know, holding on to and letting everybody know that he wins his battles with his sword and all of the stuff that he wear. And David is just a little rugged kid. And David said, I'll do it. So now he's on the battlefield with Goliath. And let's look at what's going on there. First Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 42. It says, and when the Philistine looked out and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth and rugged and of a fair countenance. Goliath looked, he saw this little rugged kid. He was insulted. He was mad. He was upset. In other words, he said, are you kidding me? This is all you have. This is what you sent in to fight a mighty warrior like me. You got to be kidding. Because you know what? You ain't got nothing coming. Let's look at what he said. Verse 43, and the Philistine said to David, am I a dog? Hmm. That thou cometh to me with a, a, staff, a staff. And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Not David's God, but by his God. And the Philistines said to David, come to me and I'll give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. He's selling wolf tickets. He telling David, first of all, he's insulted. This is all the army of Israel have. This the best they can do. They send in this little kid out here to fight me. <laughs> he said, but you know what? What I'm going to do to him? He said, I'm going to give his flesh to the fowls of the air and the beast of the field. But David was not a coward. Verse 45, it says, and then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou have defiled. He said at this day, notice the words coming out of his mouth. These are faith filled words. That's not doubt. That's not unbelief. He said this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hands. He said, I'm going to smite thee. Hallelujah. I'm going to give the caucus to the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. I want you to think about this for a minute. There's a war going on here. It haven't even started, but it's a war of words. Goliath is looking at David, insulted that this is what they were saying. All you have that you're sending after me is a little rugged kid. This is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to feed you to the birds. David wasn't a coward. David on the other side, David said, oh yeah, really? Putting in my words, that's what you think you're going to do to me. He said, but you don't know my God. See, God is an equalizer. When you have God on your side, you have more than enough. Yeah. David said, you don't know who you're up against. You're looking at me, you're looking at size, but my God is able to deliver you into my hands. When? This day. David was not talking trash like Goliath. David was giving him facts of what he was going to do to him because he had the army of God and God backing him up. And he told him, this is what I'm going to do for, to, to you. He looking at David, but David had a resume of his own. 
David had fought a bear and a lion, so he was not a chump. He just didn't have the muscles and all of the outward show, but he was strong enough, brave enough, and knew that God would deliver this giant into his hand. Yeah. You got the nerve to defile the living God, to talk about my God? He said, but I got it. He's going to deliver you into my hands this day. Now, notice. Nothing have happened. Notice, they're apart. They're facing each other. Goliath is saying what he's going to do. David is saying what he's going to do. The difference, David is releasing faith-filled words out of his mouth. Yeah, First yeah, of all, yeah. he asks, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What does that mean? The circumcision meant that David was a covenant child with God. That covenant meant that God was backing him up. The covenant meant that God was his deliverer. That's what the covenant meant. The covenant meant that God would fight his battles for him. And David knew the God that he served. That's the point right there for all of us to remember. Know your God. Know the power of your God. Know what God will do for you. When you are going through your struggle, when you're in the midst of your battle, know that God is right in the middle with you. And with God, is more than enough. With God, all things are possible. You can do the impossible. David released powerful, faith-filled words out of his mouth. Words are important. Words have power. So what are you releasing out of your mouth? Even before he, the battle started, he told Goliath what he was going to do to him. So now in the midst of your challenges, what are you saying? What are you confessing? Is it the word of God that you're releasing out of your mouth? Or are you just Letting in and everything come out of your mouth. Doubt and unbelief. That's why we're fasting words. Because we're going to watch what we do release out of our mouth. Goliath said to David, as he started toward David, David over here on the other side, he didn't back up. He didn't run back. But David charged him as he was coming toward him. And David didn't have a sword, didn't have a shield, didn't have a spear, but David reached in his little pouch and got out a stone. See, David had a slingshot and a stone going against a nine foot plus giant, but God was with him. And as Goliath was coming toward him, David pulled out the stone, put it in his slingshot and he wound it up. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Boom! Yeah. Right there. The middle of his head. And Goliath fell forward. David told Goliath, I'm going to take your head, put it on your shield, yeah. Yeah. and march around with it. David put his foot on Goliath. Reached down and got Goliath's sword because he didn't have one and cut Goliath's head off. Put the enemy where he belonged, under your feet. He's a defeated foe. You already have the victory. Yeah. And he'll do to you what you allow. If you let him to create havoc in your life and you sit back, if you cower down, and you don't say anything, that's what you're going to get. But if you open up your mouth, release those faith-filled words out of your mouth. Say what God says about your situation in his word and then act on it. Because you can't just talk a good game and sit and do nothing. You know, a lot of people can talk about it, but it said be about it. So you get up and you do something. And that's what David did. And he got the victory. He took it back to Saul. 
Oh, and they were rejoicing and shouting and said, all will know now that there's a God in Israel. Oh, yeah. The rest of the uh, soldiers, now they are brave. They want to run after him because the Philistines have lost their giants, so they are running. And David's army is chasing them. None of them was brave enough to step up to the, uh, step up and do the job. But now that David have taken care of Goliath, now the army, all of a sudden, they've got some nerve, you know. Don't wait on anybody else to fight your battle. Fight it. You and God. Amen. Don't wait till somebody else jump in and start working it for you that you get some nerve. Now you want to do something. Don't work that way. Get up. Move. Amen. Fight your own battles. You and God are more than enough. Hallelujah. We're all in a battle. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know. When the last time you picked this up? That's your answer. Right here in the word of God. That's your answer. Whatever you're going through, it's in here. If it's sickness in your body, it's in here. If it's problems in your home, it's in here. If it's between you and your spouse, it's in here. You don't know, men, you don't know how you're supposed to treat your wife. God said, you got a lover. And that love is unconditional. Hallelujah. We like that part. That don't mean you love me when I do right. That don't mean you love me when you come home and I've cooked a great dinner. And then when you come home and I haven't cooked, you still have to love me. Amen. Amen. It's in here. I didn't make that up. But then he told the women. Submit. God, I don't want to submit. What do you mean submit? I just want to submit to you, God. I don't want to listen to him. But you know what? That's not a hard job. Because when you get the right man that love you like God said, love you in the word, ain't no problem. It don't mean that you're a doormat, that they walking on you. That's not what submit means. Amen. Amen. What it do mean is he get the last say. I know, I know, ladies, I know, I know. Y'all don't like that part, I know. If there's a decision to be made in the house and you two don't agree, he gets the final word. Mm-hmm, yeah, okay. That's the truth. It's in the, it's in the word, it's in the Bible. But now, ladies, let me say this. I just got to say this. This is not so. No, it's not negative. But I, I, I'm going to say it anyway. If he mess up, you give him the final say and he mess up. Guess what you get to say? I told you so. <laughs> but, you know, we can't say that now because we fast in our mouth. Amen. <laughs> But you do get that last, you will get a chance to say that. He had the last say in the situation and you can get the last say and say, I told you that was not going to work. But we don't do that, do we? Because we love them and they love us. So whatever you're going through, here it is, right here in the word of God. We're talking about the power of words. That's what we're talking about. David defeated Goliath, and it started with his mouth. It started with what he said, even before the battle began. So what am I saying to you? Release faith-filled words out of your mouth, because words have power. And when you're going through situations, do what the... Uh, Shubanite woman did in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. The Shubanite woman had a son. She had prayed for him for a long time. 
God gave her a son after Elisha, the man of God, prayed. And one day her son died. She took her son upstairs, laid him on the prophet's bed because they had built a room for the prophet in their house, Shubanite woman and her husband. Her dead son, she took him upstairs, laid him on the bed. And she came downstairs and she told her husband, have the servant to get the uh, chariot ready for me. I'm in a hurry. I'm going to see the man of God. So her husband says to her, well, why are you going to see the man of the God, man of God? It's not that time of the year. Why are you going to see him? She said, uh, I'll be back. Notice what she said, what she released. She said, I'll be back. She didn't say anything about her son. So now she's in the chariot and she told the servant, get in a hurry. Don't slow down. I'm going to see the prophet. See, some things you get to working on right away. You don't waste any time. And as the prophet see her coming from a distance, he says to his servant, he said, go and see what's going on. She's coming and she's rushing. She's in a hurry. Go see what's going on. So the servant goes and he meet her and he says to her, he says, how is everything? How is your husband? It is well. Everybody say it is well. Her child is dead. The words out of her mouth. She's in faith believing that he can be raised from the dead. She didn't say he's dead. You don't speak what you have. You speak what you want. It is well. So he says, well, how is your husband? It is well. How is your child? That's where. I would have fell apart. I'm just keeping it real. My child is dead. She said, it is well. Her husband couldn't help her. The prophet's servant couldn't help her. She didn't tell them what was going on. She said, it is well. She stayed in faith. Release powerful, faith-filled words out of her mouth. It is well. So when you're going through, you don't have to tell everybody your business if they can't help you. She waited until she got to the prophet. This is where her help is. And she told the prophet what was going on to take him back to lay hands on her, her son and raise him from the dead. That's what we do when we're going through challenges. I can't help you. Everybody on your job can't help you. Everybody you meet can't help you. So why is it you telling everybody, oh, I'm going through this. My situation is so bad. I don't know what I'm going to do with these kids. They just can't seem to line up. They're acting out of character. My husband is working part time and I don't have a job. How are you doing? It is well. That's what you want to say. Why? Would you say it is well in the middle of your challenges because you have the word of God on your situation? You're speaking in faith, powerful faith, feel words out of your mouth. That's what you're doing and you're trusting God. So whatever your situation might be, whatever you're going through, stay in faith. Trust God, release faith filled words out of your mouth and believe that those things that you say shall come to pass. Do you accept it? Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. We never want to close our service without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So if you're here in the sanctuary, viewing us via live streaming around the world, I want you to give me your undivided attention, if that's you, and repeat these words after me. 
And we here in the sanctuary, we're going to say them along with you. We're going to support you. So I want you to repeat after me. Lord, Lord I'm, a I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Of a savior. I, believe I believe that Jesus died for my sins, Jesus died for my sins. Rose, on rose on the third day, now seated, now seated at the right hand of the Father, the right of the Father. interceding for me. Come into my heart and save me now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I am saved. Oh, come on and let's give all that came into the body of Christ and hallelujah shout of praise. And I want to just encourage you and say to you that that's the best decision that you could make. That's the beginning of the rest of your life. And I want to encourage you to get into a Bible teaching church that you can learn and grow into wisdom and knowledge into the things of God and be all that God have called you to be and do all that he called you to do. Love of Christ Worship Center is such a church. And if you're in this local area, the Chicago area, we invite you to come and be a part of us. We would love to have you. We promise you two things. We'll love you and teach you God's word. But if you're not in this local area, you can still become a part of this ministry. Just go to our website and follow the instructions and become a part of this ministry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, this is the first Sunday. And we always have communion on the first Sunday. And Jesus himself said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We never, never want to forget what our salvation cost our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It cost him everything. It cost him his life. Jesus said the night before going to the cross, to pay the ultimate price. Want everyone to please stand. He took the bread and he said, this is my body. As often as you eat of this bread, which represents his body and the suffering and the pain that he suffered for you and I, he said, eat of this in remembrance of me. So let us eat together. He took the cup and he lifted it. This cup is symbolic of the shedded blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, drink it. And as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So let us drink together. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for the finished work of Calvary. God, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you made that we might have this right. And we never, never want to forget what our salvation cost you. We thank you, Lord, for the ultimate sacrifice that you made for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And at this time, our sister Mary will come and give you the announcements. Amen, Pastor. Thank you so much for that wonderful teaching on the power of words. I cannot wait to try that word fast this week. I did not do it last week. We weren't here, but it's going to be wonderful. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of this service today and come up here and do the announcements. And it's time now for all of us to be part of the service with our um, giving of our tithes and offerings. So praise God for that. Amen. Uh, God has given us so much yes, he and he asks for so little in return. So please, Lord, please accept our gifts as uh, small or large as they are and multiply them for your 
work in this world. And uh, everybody, please uh, feel cheerful when you're giving because it is a privilege to be able to give back to the Lord. So amen. And if anyone needs uh, an offering envelope, please raise your hand. Uh, there should be okay. And looks like everybody's got one. Uh, now, while the offering is being collected, I have some announcements and we have um, exciting news. There's going to be another water baptism held before the end of this year. Uh, yeah. So uh, please see pastor or uh, next week when prophetess is here. If you or a member of your family are interested in getting baptized, we had a beautiful baptism ceremony not that long ago. And it's wonderful to have another one so quickly. Yes. Uh, other good news is a new foundation class will be held in 2025. This will be the third one that I'm aware of. And it's such a powerful teaching. Um, so please consider joining this. It'll really, if uh, you're new to coming to church, it'll really help you get your feet and get your foundation built in your faith. And otherwise, you can come for a renewing of your faith. It's great, great discussions and great teachings. Um, and then we're always looking for help in the Ministry of Helps. So please see the pastors today or uh, prophetess next week if you have any, uh, if you care to volunteer for that. And of course, on Wednesdays, we have Zoom Bible study, yeah. which is yeah. so great. Yeah. We've been going yeah. through all kinds of wonderful yeah. teachings. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to it every Wednesday. It gets you going through the week and gets you to Sunday. So it's a nice little boost in the middle of the week. Yeah. Uh, just go to the navigation and um, uh, navigate to the Love of Christ Worship Center, Worship Center and it, uh, select the media option. And the drop down will show you the Zoom Bible study and just press the button to connect. And I just realized I forgot to explain how to give online. Um, just in case you are watching on live stream, uh, go ahead to the Love of Christ Worship Center org. Follow the tab that says giving and the instructions will be right there. Very simple to give. Uh, and you can text to give by texting the word give to the number 708. 377-2911. Sorry about that, that I didn't mention that sooner. And we thank you very much for your contributions. Um, and that's all I have today. So here's Pastor again to close us out. This brings our service to a close. And if you're a first time visitor, we want to welcome you and thank you for coming to be a part of our service. There's many places you could have gone many things you could have done, but you chose to be a part of our service here. And for that, we're grateful. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence, traveling grace is ours in Jesus' matchless name. We bind up accidents in the spirit of accidents. Lord, we thank you for traveling grace in Jesus' matchless name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, and keep you in peace. God bless you. Enjoy your week. It was a pleasure to share the good news of the gospel with you. So let us make our positive confession of faith. Ready? This is my Bible. Excuse me. Let's open it. <laughs> let's, let's fast forward. Ready? This church is blessed, <laughs> and we are blessed. Wall to wall people here. Every time we meet, we are a purpose-driven people. Hallelujah. Just know that Jesus loves you, and so do we. Consider yourselves dismissed.